on this episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists. Because they're always thinking of, of new products and things, and they'll usually contact me, and they've got kind of a core group of, of other key opinion leader hygienists that they'll send us early prototypes and, and have us use those and give them feedback and let them know what we think. They love having suggestions. They love knowing what's not working about a prototype. And then once they make some tweaks, they'll send us the, the finished product. And, and if we all approve, then they'll start manufacturing it in, in mass numbers. I will say in the 12 years that I've been practicing, I've had a lot of patients that they need full, four full quads of SRP, but they maybe really don't need local anesthesia. So having an option that is providing them comfort and release without Having to use a needle is great too. Yeah, this is a tale, a tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one, bringing the best of dental knowledge. And we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening and preventing gum disease. We're gonna do a lot of learning and have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. A tale of two hygienists. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists podcast. And in this special episode, which is brought to you in part by PacDent, we are catching up with our good friend and our good buddy, Bethany Montoya. And we get down to the basics. And it's really, I think, critical that among all of the podcasts that we do, that sometimes we circle back and get down to the basics. Especially now, we have so many options for instruments, for our profi pace and things like that. Things that we use on a daily basis with just about every single patient, it can kind of get overwhelming. So in this episode, I really want to guide you to a couple of things. And I know Bethany already talks about this in the episode, but the first thing is I always look for quality of product. Do the products feel cheap? Does the marketing feel cheap? Or do they feel like good quality? I feel like PacDent specifically, who we're going to talk about in this episode, does a really good job of that. And the second thing, does this company support me and the things that drive me, the things that are important to me? PacDent has been there for the dental hygienist for several years. Everything being equal, they should really be considered when it comes to which products you choose for your office. Because in addition to the products themselves... They help us earn quality CE, they put on events, they reach out to hygienists, and they find out what can they do to make our lives easier. And I think that's really admirable. You're really going to enjoy this episode with Bethany Montoya, and be sure to visit their website, pack-dent.com, packdent.com. Have a great weekend, everybody. A tale of two hygienists. Welcome in listeners to this week's episode. We're joined today by Bethany Montoya. Bethany, thank you for making time for us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So we're going to talk about a lot of things today. This episode is brought in part by PacDent. So thank you, PacDent, for, for helping us with this. PacDent, um, I, I've mentioned this on the, I think it's actually the last one you and I did, where you know they've been so freaking supportive of hygienists. It's been among the the better companies in the last several years where they go way out of their way to make sure that hygienists are supported. And we're here under one roof. And I was hoping that we maybe, you know, we could talk a little bit about like what they, what they're doing here, like what the show's about and kind of what their presence means for, for dental hygienists. Are you working the booth also with them or are you just yeah. kind of helping out doing stuff? Um, I've been doing a lot of work for, for PacDent during this event. I've worked the booth. I have spoken at some new product presentations for them a couple of, a couple of days during the event. And then I was helping out at the Cloud Impact Den evening reception last night, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 It was good. Good turnout, right? It was. Man. It was so much fun. Yeah, You walked in that room and it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. was. Yeah. So they, they've done a lot. I mean, I guess that, that that's just kind of trying to showcase to listeners like, you know, they're not just here and putting up a booth and just being like, hey, stop by the booth. Like they're like, hey, hygienist, how can we get involved? And the thing is like, so you walk up to their booth and they're not just like, hey, here's all of our products. They're like, what are you looking for? Like, how can we help you in your situation? That's really kind of cool. Now, what were the new product presentation stuff that you were talking about? So we talked about, on Thursday, we talked about their redesigned anti-splatter profi angle. So 
in the past, they had kind of like this wiper mechanism underneath the, the sure. rotating cup. We've seen that. It was like a blade kind uh-huh. of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but what Pactin had learned is some of their clinicians were coming back and saying, the anti-splatter part's great, but that blade is kind of obstructing my vision when I'm working on my patient. And so they took that feedback and they created a new prototype to where they took out the fin. And now there's a very small fender that sits underneath the rotating rubber cup. And so it's doing the same thing that all, mm-hmm. the old fin used to do, but you really can't see it. It flexes with the rubber cup. And I love it. I think it's great. Very nice. Yeah. So I presented on that on Thursday. Yesterday, I presented on their new x ray positioning system. It's called the Easy Aim. I don't think I knew that they had that. Yeah. Well, it's new, obviously, in the very, station. But. Very, very similar to the X-ray positioning system that most people are familiar with, the, the color-coded one, but remarkably less in price. And the sensor holders on the system are much smaller. They're single-use adhesive, so you're not going to have your patients complaining about those those prongs jabbing into their gum tissue and cutting them open and all that, trying to get through an FMX. So it's it's a really good system, and and I could just tell yesterday at the product presentation there was a lot of excitement just around having Orders. a less expensive, more comfortable option there. So it's well, like it's stuff. like one of the beginning steps of your appointment. Like you start off on the wrong foot, yeah. and you're like already like jabbing them in the gums, yeah. right? Well, the and roof you can the see the damage you've already. You look in there like, oh, they have a little. Oh, that was from me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I see that all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I almost want to bring it up to them. Like, did you know you have a large cut in, <laughs> in yeah. your gums? And then I think, oh, that's from the FMS. You're like, uh, I you hate did that. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a bummer. So, so there's still a ring though, uh, positioning. Still a help. ring. Okay. Yes. Everything is color coded the same. So, you know, red, yellow, blue, all that good stuff. But what I had communicated during the product presentation yesterday as being a common problem for a lot of clinicians is, you know, most offices have x-ray positioning systems, but they just don't have enough parts because those, like the x-ray sensor holders, they tend to crack, they tend to break, melt in the autoclave, yeah, all that stuff. That one part opens up too big and doesn't hold the the film and or sensor Mm -hmm. so you you can as a clinician it's it's kind of a small frustration but it's significant enough to where you know patient after patient you're having to take x-rays but you can't find what you need Mm -hmm. and a lot of offices are reluctant to order the proper supply because of how expensive it is so i just i really appreciate that pactin is providing a more economical solution and and they've kind of taken out that challenge with the sensor holders breaking down and melting and all that by by having a single use option so it's good yeah that's very smart it'd be yeah. nice to have something fresh and uh every time because i know when i look in the drawer and i see the pieces i know which ones work well and it's like right. oh, let me grab those oh, really yeah. quick and then you have you your put favorite the data because i really want that one back yes yeah. and so because it is hard to ask for to order new ones and, and they shouldn't... they get loose or they fall you get the get it in their mouth and it falls apart right there when you're trying to take your image and it's on the floor right yeah so right that'd be wonderful yeah can we talk about like the that innovation process i, I don't know how much of a behind the scenes look you get it to as they're innovating these 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 changes when when do they bring in the dental hygienist for this Pretty early on, honestly, because they're always thinking of of new products and things, and they'll usually contact me, and they've got kind of a core group of of other key opinion leader hygienists that they'll send us early prototypes and and have us use those and give them feedback and let them know what we think. Um, they love having suggestions. They love knowing what's not working about a prototype. And then once they make some tweaks, they'll send us the the finished product. And, and if we all approve, then they'll start manufacturing it in, in mass numbers. So they really do care about the hygienists. They really do listen to the feedback. And I've even seen working at the booth with them at events like this, I oftentimes see their team asking the hygienists that are coming up saying, oh, yeah, I use that product. And and they'll ask, like, how do you like that? What do you like? What don't you like? What's not working for you? So I love that. I just really appreciate that they consider all those things. Yeah. And when we're looking at some of these these other products that they have, 
Are there any other ones that get you excited that, that, that you're like, you know what, like that's something that we need to have in every office? I would say out of all of their hygiene products, um, there's two that come to mind, actually. The the one that I, I really, really like is their cordless hygiene handpiece. I've tried just about every brand manufacturer over the 12 years that I've been practicing. And I really appreciate Pack Dense. It's called the ProMate CL. It's the lightest one on the market. But I also like that you can use any kind of profi angle that you want. You're not limited to just, you know, their brand. It's Excellent. universal. <laughs> and I also like from my personal experience and then also just talking with colleagues, it's very rare to run into issues with the system, which can be kind of hard to find in a cordless system because they're they're kind of fragile and battery life on a lot of them can be not so great. And and Pactent really, I feel like they had a home run with with their version of the cordless handpiece. So I really like that one. And then another, it it might sound kind of silly, but their disposable air water syringe tips are another favorite of mine. So years ago, I started you know attending CE courses and learning that the reusable stainless steel syringe tips were actually hazardous for our patient's health because they harbor all kinds of bacteria and crud and all this stuff. And so I just remember learning maybe, I don't know, back in 2016 or something for the first time that we really all should be using disposable air water syringe tips. But I had a hard time accepting that because I use my air water syringe ship quite a bit to retract my patient's cheek. Same, yeah. And it's hard to do with a plastic tip. It just doesn't have that same strength. So I really like Pactent's version. They've got a few different designs, just depending on the type of air water syringe you have in your operatory. But they're a much more durable plastic. Some of them have kind of a, a thin metal lining on the inside. So if you are somebody like me that you're using your syringe tip to do a lot of retracting, you've got that extra strength. Well, what about uh, water contamination in the air when you're just trying to get air? Do you find that the metal versus the plastic is, has a difference? No, I really haven't. So they, they seem pretty comparable in that way. Good. So, yeah. But I, I really like that product. Again, it's it's very simple everyday things that we don't really think about too much, but they do make a difference in terms of just keeping our patients and ourselves safe and and comfortable and all that good stuff. Do they have ones that lock in? Yes. That's like that's my biggest uh, pet peeve of the plastic ones of yesteryear. Like you loosen up the, I mean, depends on what which uh, version of air water syringe you have, but it, even if you loosen things up and you put it in and tighten it all the way, it doesn't work. And if you have the one where you like the ring one where you push it in and then there's no like little groove yeah, or whatever, like it just, right. it doesn't it lock just, in. It, it comes right back out. Yes. And I can't tell you how many people I've sprayed in the face <laughs> like, I out too, with my yeah. air water syringe tip oh. hitting them as a, a projectile. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've, I've done that lots of times too. But yes, they have like three or four different variations of that syringe tip. So you really can find yeah. one for any type of syringe that you've gotten off. So it's good. Um, so tell me about ginger cane and yeah. how can the hygienists use that to keep their patients more comfortable in, when it's, it's the local anesthesia isn't, isn't a hundred percent needed, but we just want something that's going to help them. Yeah. Well, first I will tell you that I am from Texas and in Texas, we haven't been allowed to administer local anesthesia. It did get approved and passed last year, but we're still in the process of getting curriculum together that's approved and all that. And even as great as it is that we'll have the option of using local anesthesia, there's still a lot of limitations there. We'll only be able to perform infiltration only. So I, I see where we're going to continue to need good options for topical anesthesia if if we're in a rush and we really don't have time to wait for the dentist to come in and, and give a block to our patient, things like that. Um, I love ginger cane because it's... It's just simple and easy. It's it's a 20% benzocaine gel. So basically the same formulation that you will use in, you know, a pot of topical anesthesia for your patient, but they've placed it inside of a syringe applicator. And so it allows you to be very precise in where you want to place that topical. 
and it gives you the option to really get deep below the gum tissue, which is something that's kind of impossible to do if you're just applying it with a cotton tip. Scooping it on your instrument and scaling yeah, with it. <laughs> you're just yeah. kind of hoping for the best, yeah. um, but it, it, it makes it so much more effective when you've got an applicator that can help you get several millimeters below the gingival margin. So I've been using it for years now, and every hygienist that I've interacted with in Texas, at least, will tell me like, oh, yeah, I love ginger cane. I use it so much. So I love it for uh, my patients that I'm performing gingivitis therapy for. It's great for that. Um, lots of patients that I see, you know, they might not need full quads of scaling and root planing. And so those those ones that are just needing some limited, it's Localized. great for that. And there are, I mean, I will say in the 12 years that I've been practicing, I've had a lot of patients that they need full, four full quads of SRP, but they maybe really don't need local anesthesia. Um, so having having an option that is providing them comfort and relief without having to use a needle is great too. So I really like the product. It's awesome. It's one of those things too, like, so we, in Florida, very similar to, to Texas, it was kind of a, a late adopter to local anesthesia. And so the clinicians that I was working with down there, they just didn't either get their certification or they didn't feel comfortable doing it, or they just didn't understand it. And they've been using, you know, some sort of atopical type application for, for forever. Yeah. Right. And I think a lot of clinicians just prefer it sometimes, you know, it's just, it's, 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 you know, it's all in the hands of the polar, I guess, but it's like, you know, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And like you mentioned, like it, it, you're not going to be restricted by state like legislation. Like every state can do this at least right. because it's just topical. Right. Well, and tell me about the dispensing and the storage of it. Does Is one syringe per patient or is it like you can use a little bit of it and change the tip like we do with etch? I mean, how? Yes, that's a good question, actually. So that's another another characteristic about ginger cane that I really like. It You would use it very similar to a syringe of sealant material. So you have an applicator tip that you're screwing onto the syringe and you're applying whatever you need, but you don't have to throw away what you don't use for that patient. You can just remove that applicator tip and there's a cap that you'll screw on and then you can wipe it down with disinfectant just like you would your etchant or your sealant material. And then it will be available for the next patient. You'll just put on a brand new applicator tip. And I know... That solves a big problem just in and of itself because some of the other topical options that we have, you're limited to just using it for the one patient. There's a lot of waste yes. that goes into that too, and you're having to throw away pretty expensive product. And so I, I love that you're able to be more conservative in this way and, you know, it kind of goes beyond just, you know, conserving funds, but you're, you're conserving materials, limiting waste, all that good stuff. So I, I love that Pactent and, and Ginger Pack have really thought about all those things as, as they've come together with some of these options for topical anesthetic. It's good. Well, you're a wonderful representative for Pactent, obviously, Two. and you know so much about, <laughs> so knowledgeable, but you also are just an advocate for hygienists and what we need to take care of our patients. And I just, what advice would you give to someone that's, you know, starting out doing this and, um, really inspired by listening to you how do they ask for these things that you're that you're talking about today yeah well thank you first of all um i think my biggest piece of advice would be to be very choosy on the continuing education that you go to one mistake that i made early on as a clinician is i just did the bare minimum on my ce requirements I usually procrastinated and I didn't do much of my classes until I was about due to renew my license. And then, you know, I'm panicking like, oh my gosh, where am I going to find these classes? And I'd end up just going for whatever was the cheapest, most convenient. And, you know, I still got the education, but I would say looking back, the quality of that education wasn't great. And and so the longer that I've been practicing and the more that I've just grown in, as a person, but also just in, in the provider that I want to be, I've gotten really selective on the classes that I choose. I, I seek them out. I find topics that interest me and that I'm actually like looking on the Internet, like, where can I learn more about this stuff? I started 
personally investing in events like RDH under one roof where, you know, I talk to clinicians all the time that they're like, oh, yeah, I've heard about under one roof, but I don't want to spend that kind of money. Like there's stuff right here in my area. And I just think like you just I, until you attend, mm-hmm. you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you're missing out on. And then you keep coming back. Yes. Yes. I, I came to my first under one roof in 2021 and I promised myself that I would be a lifelong attendee just because the caliber of information and speakers that you get at this event, it, it's unparalleled. You're not going to find that in, you know, your Reiki Dink webinar or, you know, a component meeting or whatever. All those things are great. They all have a purpose. But if you're somebody who's really wanting to elevate your career and you want to stay up on the latest advancements in, you know, the science of prevention and whole patient care, all that good stuff, events like these, and again, just being so selective on the classes that you take are going to make all the difference. And once you go to those classes and you get that information, if you're wanting to implement new things with your practice, once you go back to work, I think that a really great way to do that is to ask to sit down with either your practice owner or your entire team, like maybe during a a monthly meeting or a morning huddle or whatever that might look like, and just break it down. Like, you know, I attended this course and this is what I've learned. I would put a little bit of strategy in there, maybe have like a few main points that you want to drive home to your team and, and just really come with the facts of, you know, this is how it's going to benefit our patients. This is how it's going to benefit our team. And any practice owner wants to know how it's going to benefit their bottom line. And bottom line, honestly, in the, in the realm of hygiene, it's going to be the most impacted by quality of care. So that that would be my recommendation. Well, that's great. And, and I love how you ask them to uh, have some personal responsibility in coming them with the facts, with the evidence. Like, yeah. why do I want to do this? Yeah. Um, so great, great information today. And how can our listeners get in touch with you? I mean, it'll be in the show notes, but can you can you just uh, let them know the easiest way? Yeah. So they can either connect with me on LinkedIn, Bethany Montoya, but I also have a social media platform. It's called Human RDH. Uh, my largest platform is on Instagram, but I've also got a smaller account on TikTok and Facebook. But those would be the easiest ways. And if you would like to know more about Pactin and their amazing products, you can either go directly to their website, which is pactent.com, or they do have a social media account on Instagram. It is hack underscore dent. Well, it's been wonderful getting to talk with you today. Thank you so much, Bethany. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, this is a tale. A tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one Bringing the best of dental knowledge And we do it all with ease We cover oral health and screening And preventing gum disease We're gonna do a lot of learning And have a little bit of fun Working at the dentist A tale of two hygienists